and we're live what's up everybody this marshall lee couture it's my middle name and my last name for you of marsh makes comics today we're going to be talking about uh, mixed media techniques collage techniques just different kind of crafty techniques that can be used in the world of comics you know um we often think of comics medium as drawing with ink and pencil you know drawing with pen pencil and then inking those things and then coloring usually digitally or in the past there was a different process i don't know how it works you know go watch cartoonist kayfabe if you want to learn about more about how it worked i don't know how it worked <laughs> I kind of get a little bit of an idea <laughs> from little things I've, I've run across, but I wasn't there, you know, I don't know. I, I'm kind of confused on how it works, to be honest. <laughs> um, you know, typical traditional comic book methods of making comics we often think of, but, um, you know, I think it's kind of cool to consider other um, methods so we got this stream going on facebook and twitter and youtube um figure why not you know um it doesn't hurt anything so anthony pierce is here from facebook what's up thanks for hanging out and we got Devante edwards here from youtube hey yeah i'm sure we'll have some more people filtering in guys let me know um if you hear a fan in the background because if you do not hear a fan in the background, then I will be able to remain cooler throughout this broadcast. <laughs> if you do hear a fan in the background, then I will be sweating. But you won't notice it. So don't, don't you worry your little heads about that. <laughs> I don't mind being hot. But, you know, I'd rather be hot than cool. That's for sure. Like, I'd rather feel too hot than too cold. Um. But, uh, you know, if, if I can not be hot, as hot, that would be nice. Um, so anyways, yeah, we're going to show off a lot of cool things. You do not hear a fan. Okay. So that means my microphone is doing its job <laughs> and blocking out those kind of ambient sounds, I guess. So that's good. If anybody hears anything not so great, let me know. Um, so yeah, we're going to get into some stuff tonight. We're going to talk, we're going to chat, we're going to, I mean, we're going to actually, basically, if you've watched my shows as of late, uh, <laughs> I tend to come on recently and I, um, show all the things that my mom has gotten me <laughs> for art supplies because my mom is getting into art and she just retired and, you know, she was trying to make sure she had all the supplies she needed for her art projects after retirement. Um, so <laughs> she also got me stuff too, because obviously we're both into art. So, um, so I'm going to show off a bunch of stuff. Uh, Anthony Pierce. Hey, I know you, man. We got, we've kind of gone back for a long time. I, mean, I don't know, you know, you, but I know I've heard seen you around a lot. And uh, I remember, yeah, fan of the locust wraps. Thank you. I'm glad you dig it. <laughs> Yay, mom. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, uh, yeah, so let's get into some of the things. There's so many things. Not only that, but there's other things I want to show you, too. And it all has is related to using other techniques, other methods of making um making comics i guess one thing i could show right off the bat and i didn't even think about doing this but why not is the old ipad um the project i've been working on let me uh get myself in here it has face recognition and i don't know i don't always want to do face recognition but i did because it seemed faster i don't know why i did it it was like I was kind of against it, and then I just did it. I don't know. But half the time, it doesn't recognize my face anyways. 
So, um, is it in Clip Studio or Procreate, the latest tweaks? Probably in Clip Studio. Because Clip Studio is kind of better for, for Photoshop type of stuff. Do you guys know what's the uh, what's a good alter? I, I should probably know this, but what's a good alternative for um, for Photoshop and Illustrator? I know Inkscape. I think is it Inkscape or something that's good for um, a good alternative for. Oh wait, I don't want to show that. <laughs> I mean, it's that's not the finished version, anyways. But uh, maybe I was doing it in Procreate. That doesn't, no, I definitely wasn't doing it. Why isn't it open? I must have closed it. Let's see. Da, 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 da. I think it would be this one. Select open. Um, so this is something you can't really see very well because <laughs> uh, I did print out like, a test of this but i didn't print out this particular amount it's kind of hard to see i wonder if there's a way i could get away with not having glare on this so much uh this is kind of it but hmm i don't know how to get away from the glare but i've been doing this kind of uh um i could take the camera down but i really don't want to because it's like tied up there in a certain way um so anyways i've been doing the zine um for uh janet janet's uh got janet from um her name is janet young she's got a youtube channel and she's one of dd Dee Dee willingham's mod moderators and so she's got this like zine um swap going on so I'm doing mine as like photo collage, and uh, Didi set had um, created. Um, she did. She does like if you go on her streams, which she has streams Monday morning from eight thirty to around twelve, and Wednesday morning from eight thirty around twelve. So definitely check her out. There's a link in the description to her YouTube channel if you're into stuff like I'm going to be sharing today. Um, for lots of fun and inspiration um she is uh, uh I, my my thoughts are funny at the moment <laughs> like like i'm having a hard time formulating words for some reason but anyways she um her, her friend janet which i've also become a little bit of you know internet friends with um is doing this zine swap thing. So I decided to do mine with photo like collages. And she gave me the prompts, uh, lizard farmer and, uh, vines. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just taking pictures of all those kind of things and bashing them together and making a zine out of them. And I'm probably going to put words in there like they're comics. Um, but I just haven't done that part yet. <laughs> so um, I don't know. I'm having fun. And I wish you guys could see this more clearly. Um, there's got to be a way. Oops. <laughs> but uh, either way, um, I did share some stuff on my Instagram. I'll have to do the face ID thing again. Ugh. I, I don't even want a lock on it, but whatever. So um, anyways figured I'd share that. I wish I could share it better. I can kind of share it through these tests I did. Let me see. But it's just not a finished version or whatever. And I mean, the fi the version I'm showing you now isn't finished, but um, oh, I know where I put it. I have this one, but I did a better one. Uh, and my chair, this chair is so dumb. Like, it just goes down for no reason, and it's annoying, even though I don't push, make it go down. And it's so random when it does it. So, anyways, let's see. I know I have zine, the zine in here somewhere, I'm pretty sure. I thought I put it in here. 
Or did I? Oh, wait, I put it over here. Here we go. So one thing, if you're interested in getting into mixed media and stuff, is your studio is probably going to be a freaking mess. <laughs> right now, my, my studio is actually pretty, pretty, um, is this the good one? I can't, I don't even know which one's the better one. Um, right now my studio is, is pretty clean cause I, I've been cleaning it. I cleaned it a couple times recently. Um, but anyway, so this is kind of what it looks like so far. It's still not the greatest. I have to figure out how I'm going to print it to make it kind of nice. But this is, again, I've only done a little bit in this one. This is probably the best page so far in this little version of it. So you can see I kind of photo bashed the lizard and the farmers and the backgrounds and the foregrounds. And uh, this one I did a little bit too. But I've done more with both of these pages. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. This is kind of what it's going to look like. But I'm still finishing it. Um, so, yeah. Let's get into some more of the things that uh, I got recently. Uh, what's up, Ralph? How you doing? Good to see you here. And he says, a messy studio is a working studio. That's true. That's true. <laughs> it gets even messier though when you're uh, trying to do mixed media that's for sure so I guess I'll show this one thing specifically because we talked about it I think on the last episode it's this Eisner Miller book that I bought live on in the thing and in the video the I think it was the last video and there's actually a lot of pictures which is kind of cool but basically what it is, is it's a bunch of interviews, sort of, or it's just it's just a bunch of conversations between Eisner and Miller. I've only just read the first one so far. And they're like little bite-sized pieces, too. Like, they're just like little mini interviews. And it just goes into, like, the two different, the two basically two amazing, you know, legendary comic book creators talk and shop. And you can gain a whole heck of a lot from that. I mean, that's basically what we do on these YouTube videos. But coming from, you know, these absolute legends of comic making, it's like you're going to hear some things that you don't typically hear uh, from comic book artists. Because they are not the typical art comic book artist, you know, or comic book creators. They're, I mean, and what's interesting is they're both writers and artists. And they're both like very accomplished and they're both unique and and i don't know like they but they also both come from very different places um and very different like mostly i think the biggest thing is they come from different generations because they're both i don't know are they both from new york i think if not they both spent a lot of time living in new york um and they're both very much inspired by that city in their work. You know, so definitely worth it if you can get your hands on this. I think uh, just just from the first um, little article, I'd say it's definitely worth it. Like, I can't wait to continue reading this. This is going to be like a joy to get into. <clears throat> so there's that. <laughs> this like Matt isn't. It's good. It just keeps moving. I guess I could show this. My mom, I don't know where she got this or what her plan was for this, but she has like this big mat. And she's like, do you want this? Because I'm not using it. And it's, it's a pretty cool little art, you know, desk mat. And I don't know. I think it's cool. So I was like, yeah, I'll take it. Let me give it a whirl. And I've been giving it a whirl lately, and I kind of like it. I'm giving the world a whirl. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's see what else. Doo -doo -doo. <clears throat> All right. So, let's get into some more stuff. Some more junk. 
Well, this stuff isn't stuff my mom got me, but it's other stuff that I bought. So this is just like stickers. It's kind of hard to see, but these there's like cut out stickers, and it's like flat on this side and round on the top. It's like this big rectangle, but it's round on the top, and it's got a texture to it. They're just Avery stickers, but I've been you know since I printed those um those stickers from Sticker Mule that I got told you guys about. Uh, I've been kind of interested in doing some more stickers like I used to and kind of doing custom stickers or maybe even printing some stickers. So, yeah, it's this shape right here. Um, so I just thought that was kind of interesting, a different kind of sticker shape. It's meant to go on like a wine bottle and stuff. But uh, I'm going to use it for art, put some art on it. So I got that. And then I got – these are just one – you know, this kind of smaller size, like a shipping label. All these are like labels, really, is what they are. Um, and I really want to get... Actually, this... this. I think these are, are like photo printer. -like. I got... This came with... Um, oh, I don't know what these are, man. Like, these are... Oh, these are like photo paper. I'm sorry. These are not stickers. This is like photo paper. And when I bought... Um, printer ink for my um you know my printer it came with these little photo things so that might be cool to make some little prints on actually i gotta play around with that and see how the prints come out and then maybe i could if anybody's interested i could sell some uh some little photo prints of some of my characters or something you know so that might be fun i just like doing all this like little crafty stuff you know and if it turns into a product, that's cool, too. Um, these are other little labels. You know, they're, they're really tiny. But I just figured they were cheap. Figured why not? These ones, I got two packs of these. And these are actually half this size. So they're kind of like the perfect size for some cool little character art or something. So I got two of those packs. Um this is just premium presentation paper. It's supposed to be, you know, nicer paper to use to print on. Possibly I could make prints that are sellable. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I haven't tested it out too much yet. And then this is, um, these are kind of interesting. They're uh, shipping labels again, but they ha they're have they like kind of translucent. They're kind of clear. They're, they're a little bit like foggy translucent, but they're still translucent. So I could do some art on that, but then have like translucent ed edges and stuff. That's kind of fun. So I really want to get one of those um, circuit circuit machines or whatever. I don't know if you guys have heard of them, but they do like die cut. Like you can make stickers and then cut them up with die cut. And I also might want to find a way to like, I think I can kind of do sort of la fake lamination of these but this is more just for original art stickers and stuff um and this one is just circle stickers you know just the sheets of circles so that's just another cool thing that i could do you know and maybe throw them in with like extra do extra things i don't know i just got into the idea like i used to do like graffiti sticker art a lot and I kind of want to do some more of that again because it's just fun. So, um, and you know, I can add them as I could maybe make sticker packs, you know, and sell those, or I could add them as extras when somebody buys something or whatever. I don't know, or just give them away. Who knows? So, yeah, I got that <laughs> recently. Um, and then here's some more stuff that's gonna fall if i don't handle it right <laughs> it's like this crazy stack of like supplies here that i just have waiting to do this video <laughs> so i'm gonna put them over here and show one at a time i guess i guess i'll show this first these are just little tiny sketchbooks and i want to talk to you guys about like journaling and stuff journaling is a really cool thing like it's cooler than you would expect and i think it's something that could be helpful for us comic book artists but these are just like little pocket sketchbooks they have 24 pages so 48 different sides the they happen to be thick a little bit thicker paper like sort of thicker paper um kind of like the moleskin type of thing but 
you know, I don't know. My mom, she threw these at me. So I got two of these little bad boys, which I'm looking forward. What I really want to do is try to do like a collage a day, like even a mini little mini collage or something with just two or three little elements or something. I think that could be fun. You know, some small little project um, and try to fill these bad boys up. You know, why not? So looking forward to messing with that. Um, I bought these yesterday, which this will come in handy later, but this is just twistable crayons. Um, and I want to use the crayons, but I have another idea for these that I actually heard. Uh, I, I found out from a YouTube channel that you can do with these that are interesting. So I'm going to put these to the side and show you what I mean very soon. <laughs> and then... I don't even know what these are. Like, what is the function of a rubber duck? Um, <laughs> no, but like, what is the function of this? I don't know. It looks like a, a mop head, you know, or something, but it's like rubber. <laughs> but my mom just like bought all these things that were like, let's just go through Walmart or different stores and find stuff that might make interesting marks on paper. And I'm like, yeah, that's a cool idea, actually. <laughs> so I actually already did did something with this one a little bit, but it didn't really, you know, it's not really anything significant worth saying, talking about yet. But yeah, I don't know, just something weird to make marks with. <laughs> spaghetti, rubber spaghetti thingies. Uh, this is just kind of random. She threw this in there. Um, stuff to give me. You guys probably have seen these. You can kind of sharpen your pencil. It's like sandpaper and stuff. I already have one, to be honest. But, you know, when I'm done with that one, I'll have another one. A big old sponge. <laughs> Those, This kind of thing comes in handy, especially when you're doing stuff like mixed media. Um, <clears throat> and then these bad boys, Pasca Markers. The medium. So that's one, three, six, nine, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 Posca markers. Pretty cool. I already have uh, six, five, six, six of them that like a, a pack that I got of six of basic ones, but they're like the um, more the fine tip. This is the medium tip. So yeah, paint markers. I mean, who doesn't? I love paint markers, you know, especially when you're into like graffiti art and graffiti stickers. Like I can't wait to play around with these bad boys. <clears throat> so that was, those aren't cheap either. <laughs> Yay. Graffiti sticker packs. Yes. I've done them before. I want to do them again <laughs> for sure. <clears throat> so what else did I get? Well, I got, everything in here <laughs> so these are just like these are meant for like makeup i guess but they also people also use them for art so they're like blending and they're squishy and they feel fun and they got little nipples <laughs> so yeah i don't know i got blending thingies that can be used for art <laughs> um a squeegee that can come in handy i'm sure for different kinds of art i mean I don't know exactly what I'm going to use this for, but I have seen artists use squeegees before. It's got a rubber. This is rubber, so I don't know. I almost wonder if rubber is the best thing to use for certain applications, but I don't know. Um, all these like little these blending sticks. I don't know what people always. I think people use these for like charcoal more than anything, which I I like charcoal, you know. Um, but they probably use them for graphite. You know anything kind of like that but there's multiple different sizes and stuff um that she got me and also the tiny tiny ones you know i've never even seen the big big ones i didn't know they even had those but you know basically every size you could want of blending sticks she got me she also got me syringes <laughs> and these syringes have they do have needles but the needles have blunt ends so they're they're meant for art they're not meant for anything else they're literally meant for art for like squirting ink or something you know so i don't know when these are going to come in handy but they may just come in handy one day <laughs> not for anything bad of course 
She also got me a bunch of uh, China markers. I don't know if you guys have ever used these kind of, they're called grease markers. They're also called China markers. They usually mostly only come in black or white, but I didn't, I didn't realize they also come with color. And so there's a bunch of color ones she got me too here. Um, so that's interesting. And that is why I got these twistable crayon things, because from what I heard, because if you've ever used a China marker, you know that like the way to use them, you have to like pull down the string. And I used them back in high school. You have to like pull down the string and then you peel away. Oops. And then you peel away the paper. And this is how you sharpen them. And they're kind of... They're a little bit, they can be annoying and the tips can break and stuff, you know, but they're all right. I don't know that I'm a super huge fan of China markers, but I mean, try to find a tutorial on or anything about making stuff with China markers online. And, you know, I don't know. I can't find much, but I want to see what you can do. I have some ideas, though. I think they're almost kind of like using crayons, really. They're kind of a got a crayon. Um, finish i guess you would say they're grease pencils apparently i don't know i don't know so i gotta figure out how and I, i'm looking forward to experimenting with them but i'm also unsure of what will be good with i have an idea though with something i'm going to talk about soon as well um and i also got a little mini um i think they're called brayers and I also have a big brayer that's over here because I've been using it. And uh, I'm going to tell you why soon. <clears throat> so that's, I'm super excited about that. <laughs> so that's that little bundle of stuff. But wait, there's more. <laughs> and again, making comics with all this stuff is, these are not typical like tools that people would use to make comics generally. But I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna try at least. So, so the thing with these is because it's – I showed you how with the um, grease markers – or the grease pencils slash china markers. Um, I've known them as china markers, but they're also called grease pencils. But because it's kind of such an – so annoying to use those sometimes with – with pulling off peeling the thing and then like um and then the ends break off and stuff apparently so i heard online that if i use these take out the crayon part of these twistables um then you can put those in here and the tips won't break off as easily and they'll be easier to dispense of you know so yeah i don't know i'm gonna give it a shot probably but i'm also gonna I might just want to try to play with these crayons first. I don't know. So we'll see how that all works out. Love art supplies. I have too many at this point. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see. All right. What else do we got here? Um, there's a lot of stuff. It's like Christmas. <laughs> so another thing, and this one I'm not going to be able to fully show because it's freaking huge. But my mom, you know, goes to Goodwill all the time. She's getting, like, magazines and stuff to do, like, um, what do you call it? Um, you know, collage art and stuff. And she found, like, these pad, these art pads. She got one pad was, like, Bristol board, and, and she kept that one. But she found these huge pads, and they were used, and there's drawings in them. But a lot of the pages don't have drawings in them. And it even is labeled with the person's name. And um, so that's interesting. So you could kind of see, like, I can't even really show it because it's so big. It's 18 by 24 inches. And this one's, you know, pages are taken out. The other one seems more full. But uh, 70 sheets, which means 140 sides, 80 pounds, you know, it's, it is a thicker paper. It's not Bristol paper. 
but it's it's a thicker drying material with a little bit of tooth to it um yeah so this thing is like it's like two it's like two 11 by 17 pages you know if you if you've ever made traditional comics at the traditional comic size it's like think of two traditional comic pages and it's about that size maybe bigger i don't even know let's see 18 by 24 11 by 17 yeah so that would be um because yeah that that's actually bigger than two two 11 by 17s so a little bit by like an inch or so so that's pretty cool so i got two of those pads and the person's art is kind of like i'm gonna probably just leave it on there and and like use what i i think i'm gonna do and when we start talking about like the journals and stuff i can tell you um i'm gonna i'm thinking about making journals out of some of that paper you know because one one of the things you'll find out is w journals can be really creative ways of like getting coming up with ideas and figuring out new ways of doing stuff exploring experimenting expressing all those x's i like to <laughs> spit out um and i think it can really enhance what you can do in comics and I know it will for me. I'm like, I'm interested because like, again, I've talked about this a million times, but, um, you know, uh, what's his name? Um, Sam Keith is one of them. And, uh, man, I don't know why my brain's being funny today. Um, and, um, I can't think of his name. Bill Sinkovich. <laughs> Both of those people. And there's been others who have used kind of collage or other traditional things like painting and, and watercolors and oils and all these other materials, mixed media. They've used those kind of things in their artwork, in their comics. And I think that that's just the tip of the iceberg. I kind of wish more people. Uh, is it Dave McKeon, I think? He's also, he's the one who does like, if it's not him, I'm thinking of the guy who makes, um, who did like the those um, legendary like uh, Sandman covers with Neil Gaiman, Sandman. Um, he's the one who does like those crazy covers with with the collage, basically collage art. Um, and man, I love what he does, and I'd love to play around in that world and do some stuff. You know, I don't know if it's him or there's other people like. Kind of, there was a few people in the, in the Vertigo. I mean, even Sam Keith was the first Sandman artist for the Neil Gaiman Sandman. Um, and even some people, like like even Jack Kirby used um, collage stuff in some of his comics as well. Um, there was a few other people who did stuff like that too. So it's not 100% al alien to the comics realm, but it's, it's less used. Um, so, uh, and Anthony got to go but hey thanks for stopping in and hanging out um so yeah and we got sideburns in the house as well what's up how are you doing sir thanks for coming by um so let's get into some more things actually i've already went through most of what my mom got but the big thing that I'm super most excited about is this. And the label is out, so, <clears throat> you know, you won't really see what it is. If you don't know what it is, you won't know really, but it's a jelly plate. Um, and I don't know if you've ever seen jelly plate art, but... It's basically this plate that looks like a plate of jello, <laughs> but it's clear. So you can kind of see right here. And you can do some really cool prints, print things with it. Um, and you could do, you know, print transfers. You can do just a lot of cool stuff with it. And I'm not happy that there's like little pieces in here because that could mess up some things, but. You know, I was messing around with it yesterday a lot, actually. 
I, this was like the main thing that I was super excited to play around with. And uh, so, yeah, anyways, Jelly Place. Maybe I'll even mess with it around with it tonight on stream. We'll see. Um, but if you're interested, look up Jelly Plate Transfers, Jelly Plate Prints, whatever. Like, there's some really cool stuff. There's this dude, uh, what's his name? There's two guys who I really love because um, a lot of a lot of a lot of people who do this stuff they they a lot of times they're they're girls which is fine which is awesome um, but they tend to do more of like the kind of pretty type of artwork and collage work which is fine I love that as well but it seems like it's all there is so I also like to see more like masculine approaches as silly as that might sound just because that's kind of more around the realms of stuff that i would like to do um and so there's a couple couple people who do that um yates makes y-e-a-t-e-s makes on youtube and who's the other what's the other guy's name oh gel with mark so those two people um do some really cool stuff as well. And they, they kind of, they do more experimental stuff. Whereas, I mean, it's all kind of experimental, but I know that's like blurry here, but hopefully that will be fixed soon. In fact, I should be able to fix it myself. I think, do, I, I don't think I have that program on here though. I always forget what the name, I don't think I have that program on here, but let's get some focus here. Like, why isn't it one? There we go. That's better. Okay, cool. I got to get that program. I keep forgetting to get the program that, you know, you can um, change the focus and all that uh, and contrast and all the different things um, on the camera. <clears throat> but anyways, so Jelly Plate's cool. Like, if you've ever seen, it's kind of like similar to like, um, like, uh, uh, what do you call it? screen printing? Like it's got the same kind of looks that you can get, um, but it's kind of easier than screen printing, less, less equipment, you know, that you need. Uh, and it's, um, you can kind of get that punk rock um, type of effect too. Like you really get a lot, like if you like that kind of aesthetic of like um, kind of distressed texture type stuff, you can get a lot of that going with, with the gel plates. I got some really cool um, effects with it yesterday when I was playing with it, but I wasn't getting, like, I was trying to do, you, you're supposed to be able to get, like, a magazine, and this is, like, really good for collage. You cut out a piece from a magazine, and, you know, you put the acrylic down or whatever medium you want to put, and then you put that on top of the, the gel plate, and you lift it up, and then you put your paper that you want to make the print on on that and it pulls up and you get like kind of that punk rock effect and it's kind of it comes out really cool um but not that's a hard thing to do those magazine transfers because not every magazine works with it and so far most of what i've tried hasn't worked um but there's so much more you can do with it than that so I, I got to stop trying to do that and just do other things and then go back to that another time when I feel like I'm ready to mess around again with that particular technique. But another thing I got from my mom is this rice paper. <laughs> and this is a ton of rice paper. Um, she got it at a discount. She got like, there's, there's like another six or five or six rolls of this stuff. She gave me one. And that's all I'll need. <laughs> and it's like, I'm not 100% sure how to use rice paper, like, in a way that'll work for me yet. But I'm looking forward to experimenting. And it's a very kind of thin paper, almost like tissue, like thicker than tissue paper. It's got kind of a texture to it, which probably you won't be able to see in this view. You can kind of see it a little. It's a little bit transparent, you know. And you can just do some interesting things with it. I'm looking forward to experimenting. I tried to use it with the gel plate yesterday, but I didn't do it right. You can, but the way I did it, it just got destroyed and, and ate up the paper. But what I needed to do was let it dry 
because when it's wet, it tears apart easily. When it's dry, it's actually kind of hard to tear apart. I mean, not that hard, but, you know, relatively hard to tear apart compared to, like, maybe something like uh, tissue paper or something. So, anyways, just another interesting medium to play with. Um, so... I also, I went to the dollar store yesterday, or the um, Dollar General, and, you know, they have these packs of, like, um, just, like, these little canvas boards and stuff. They have them in Michael's and other places, too, and, you know, it was cheap, so I was like, yeah, I'll just grab some. I think I have a bunch of these, too, somewhere, but I don't know exactly where they were, where they are, and these are cheap, and I've heard, and what from what I've seen, um, gel plate transfers are really, like, like you can just do them on regular computer paper, but they really work really well with canvas as well. So, you know, just figured I'd try that as well. So I'm looking forward to messing with that. Um, what? And then this is something, well, I'll show you this, I guess. I want to talk about like the journals and stuff too, but, um, Didi sent me these a long time ago. Like when I first was friends with her, or, or earlier on in the process and they're just folded you know it's like little booklets and they're not bound or anything they're just like she gave them to me like pre-folded basically and the thing is is um one of the kind of journals you can use you can create are called junk journals and they use these things they call them signatures so what they'll do is they'll they'll get a cover for this and each one of these is a signature it's called which i i don't know if you're into book binding maybe you know more about that but um i'm just i've just learned this and when you're doing I, I think it's a junk journal specifically when you're doing a junk journal that's one thing that makes you know it's a junk journal is it has all these signatures and it's all tied in and bound into one thing even though there's multiple signatures and you know i don't know pretty cool so anyways I just have, I still have this from Didi, like from many years ago, and I want to do something with it. So I'm looking forward to making something out of that. And then another thing, as I was watching Didi's channel, um, she was talking about her art journals, and she was also talking about idea journals, which is something that really intrigued me. And apparently, um, Christopher Runtman talks about this as well but he calls them his like book of tricks i think and i like that i love that title actually the book of tricks you know so you know i went on um i went on amazon because she was like well my idea journal she showed me some of her idea journals one of them was eight pages 800 pages the other one was 600 pages and i think that means actual pages so that means there's 1600 sides <laughs> which is crazy but i mean look how thick this bad boy is now again this is like this is like one of those kind of you know print on demand cheapo books that that people make is kind of cheap paper and stuff like copy paper but that that's not the point i don't care about how cheap the paper is like it's good enough this actually feels a little thicker than copy paper. And it has like this little border, which I don't know. I guess if I were trying to make this a sketchbook, I might be a little frustrated. But I don't really care because even if it was a sketchbook, I would still use it. Um, but I, I've just I've just started it. Like I made this one little section called names. And just because I had an idea, you know, something came through that was like an idea for a name. But the way she has it is she'll like tab have all these different tabs and they won't even be labeled but they're just to show you that this is a different section and she'll have all different kind of things like she'll have color themes or she'll have like animal an animal section for animal ideas or she'll have a section for clothing ideas or um you know all kinds of different possible things so this is going to be my idea book um and I think this is interesting, too, because I've been into, like, doodles and stuff. People people have, like, um, doodles. Like, they do a lot of doodling or whatever. And one thing when you're doodling is, like, it's kind of good to, like, have a set of props or things that you like to draw when you're doodling. And, and sometimes I feel like it would be helpful to have, like, a list of things that I like to incorporate in my doodles or whatever. 
And so that's kind of one thing. Or like you just have comic book ideas. Like you could even have like, like you could take, um, print out like panels that you really love. Like just, man, I, this panel is so good. Um, and just start like putting them, have a whole section just for comic book panels, or maybe you could have different kind of, it doesn't even have to be panels. It could be like, you know, say like, I like scale. I love, I, I love it when people do scale well in illustrations or in comics or whatever. So I would put like, if I found something in a magazine that really has a cool use of scale, I'll get that. Or if I see a photo online, I could you know, print it out and put it in here. You know, it's kind of just like a great place to just have all kinds of ideas and inspiration. So like when you're, you're like, all right, I don't know how to approach this. Let me look through my idea book. Oh, look at this. Look at that. You know, I, I forgot about that. You know, that's such a cool idea, you know, so different things like that. There's so many different things, you know, you could even have like a style guide or something. I don't know. There's just, and having it all kind of in one book, I mean, by now, um, uh, Didi has made like multiple books, but I think this could be a huge, great idea for a comic book artist, especially. And, and I, I, I want to actually, I would like, maybe I should have Christopher Ronsman on sometime to talk about this. Cause I'm curious to hear what his thoughts are on having, um, having this, uh, uh, what what he book of tricks as he he calls it, um, so yeah I don't know there's so many different ideas of what you could do with something like this so I'm looking forward to really f getting this thing more filled up and using this as like a resource um, you know you could have like character design things in here or I don't know like there's just so many cool things so I and you know what's kind of funny is online I found this. And it was five dollars and like twenty eight cents or something for just this. And I'm like, what for eight hundred page sketchbook? Are you crazy? So I bought two of them and I gave one to my mom. And I was like, after I did that, I was like, wait a minute. You know what? Like, I, I want more of these. And I went back and it was twenty dollars. <laughs> so I don't know what I think I bought them and somebody realized, oh crap, like we weren't supposed to price it at five dollars. <laughs> and so now I can't find anything of this size and that price, you know, but I have found some other interesting sketchbooks on um, Amazon that I'm looking forward to possibly buying. But, you know, for now, at least I got this one because <laughs> I wanted to have I was thinking of having an 800 page sketchbook just for practicing different things with drawing. Like I'd have a section for hands, a section for, you know, um, foreshortening, a section for perspective, a section, you know, and just kind of do that that type of thing. Um, and really just make it a workbook to, to learn how to draw, you know, things better. Um, so anyways, uh, there are other sketchbooks out there for usually it's like 600 or 800 or like for the big, big ones. Um, and you can find some that are more like $15. You may even be able to find stuff for like 10 or $12. Keep looking though. Maybe you'll find a deal like I did. And uh, if I ever see that five dollar one again, I'm buying more than just two. I'm gonna buy a bunch of them. You know. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to start playing around with that. So, um, and then this is like the direct opposite, which I bought this a while ago from an artist actually, who like they they kind of sell their own custom sketchbooks, sort of. And the person, the artist who, who I bought it from even drew a little picture in the front and said, thank you, you know, for buying and stuff. And I even started drawing in it um, a little bit, you know, just some sketches, nothing serious. And it's just like copy paper. It's nothing amazing. But then I heard Dee, Dee mention um, a desk journal or, you know, this is also like like when you're painting or whatever or when you're doing like the jelly it's really good for the gel prints and stuff like sometimes you got to wipe off paint and stuff so have a desk journal that you do that with and this is this thing is starting to get pretty it's pretty much almost filled now with all these textures and stuff and then i can use this as like a cool little collage book you know or I could use it for whatever. I could do some drawings in it with like white, you know, with white colored pencils or something or 
you know, just figure out some cool, fun experiments with it. So, um, and some of them have a little bit of color because I just happened to be doing stuff in black yesterday. But this is all, you know, from me trying to do these jelly prints yesterday and just having a journal right next to me. So whenever I got to wipe off my, my, uh, you know, brayer, bam, <laughs> you know, you just do that. And now you have some cool little textures you can use. I mean, I could even take pictures of these and use them, you know, in my comics, you know, as just a bad tack texture background or whatever. There's like a million things you could do with cool textures. And I love, I love it. It's just really neat. I love texture anyways, in general. So I only have like this much more pages to do that to. But I, but again, I can use this as like a collage thing and, and add some photos to this and do all kinds of stuff or, you know, any kind of mixed media thing. So yeah, having these kind of things around is great. <clears throat> And I guess last but not least for the show and tell portion of the show is this, which I've shown you this binder before, but it used to have different things in it. Now it's got totally different things. I used to keep all my like mini comic pages that I'm drawing and stuff in here. And by the way, yes, sideburns 800. <laughs> it's crazy, right? <laughs> and he says, I had a 300 page one. And I gave up. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's really intimidating to try to draw 800 pages. And again, when it's 300 pages, it's really 600 double side. Like it depends. I don't know about you when you do your sketchbooks, but I do both sides. A lot of people don't, though. A lot of people only will do. Well, I don't know. It's probably like I'd say 25 percent of artists, it seems like, don't draw on the other side of the page. Um, I think most people draw on both sides. When I when I see sketchbook flip throughs, it seems like most people draw on both sides. But if you are drawing on both sides, 800 means 1600, you know. <laughs> so anyways, um, so this used to have all my like, mi like original comic pages for like my mini comics. Those are now just up in a pile um, up on top of my bookcase. But now I'm using it with these little folders to collect um, stuff that I'm cutting up for collages. And, you know, these they have side pockets too. So there's, I've been putting stencils and stuff in here. I only have a few, a few stencils, nothing serious, you know, but I'm hoping to get some more stencils at some point. Um, more of like textures and stuff again, um, <clears throat> or patterns and whatever. But those are fun to use, can be fun to use. I mean, I haven't really used them, obviously. You'd see paint all over them if I did. But, you know, I got all these folders, and I've been starting to cut out books and stuff. Um, and I have them all, like, organized. Black and white texture, black and white words, black and white illustration. All the black and white stuff's in one side, one part, and then the color stuff places black and white people and i was i the reason why i have so much black and white is because that's what i started i started going through my black and white books and cutting them up maps and diagrams now we got the color stuff and i, I only have a little bit for the color stuff because i haven't gone i've just started to go through some color uh ephemera as it's called <laughs> or books you know to make ephemera this is called ephemera i guess that's another thing i'm learning in the uh, journaling and mixed media and collage world so color worlds color illustrations color things color animals color people and there's just some scans i did at one point <clears throat> so you know just trying to organize stuff now this is just for smaller stuff um for the bigger stuff i have so much more from what i cut out with these so i'll show you So with the bigger stuff, <clears throat> I just use the book that I cut stuff out from because I'll, I'll literally go through the whole book and cut stuff out. And this was one of the books. All the littler stuff is in that binder. But if it was bigger, you know, it's all right here. So I use like the cover of the book 
as the folder for it, and then that goes in a drawer. Some of this stuff could actually be in the smaller section. I kind of, I kind of don't. Some of this stuff need. I need to go through this and put it in the smaller section. But you know, when I was first, this was like literally the first thing I cut up, so I didn't have my system in place yet. So, um, and then this is just an envelope full of envelopes <laughs> and this i love all the little patterns inside these envelopes i have more than this too and i'm going to use those as well for different uses and again i use the cut the actual slip cover as the folder for all of these cutouts you know and some of these i just ripped the page out if the picture was so big and and some of them too like you got like the smaller picture but on the other side is pictures too so you know, sometimes if there's pictures on the other side, you just take the whole page and, you know, I could also take photos of this if I want to use it as a digital or I could take a photo of it or scan it in and print it out. So I don't necessarily have to destroy what's on the other side. Um, so, you know, just all kinds of cool imagery that could be used in collages and mixed media stuff. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been up to lately. <laughs> I mean, I am kind of trying to make comics. I finished a one page comic recently and I'm working on that little zine, which is a comic. And I'm also working on writing for the, um, the next nine volt anthology. So I'm looking forward to getting that going. I have the idea already. I just got to formulate it into a full story. So I'm way, I am making comics, but I've also been slightly sidetracked by uh, mixed media stuff. So, <laughs> <sighs> that was a lot to go through. It took me an hour to go through all that stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry if this is not super exciting to me. It's super exciting personally. <laughs> um. But yeah, I don't know. I think it would be a cool idea to uh, try to make stuff out of all, make comics out of all this stuff. So um, I really want to get organized with like the different kind of um, possibilities for journals and journaling. Um, like I really want to get into this journaling thing. And I used, to, I mean, I, I've been watching Didi for a long time and, uh, heard about this journal stuff but you know i i've been curious but haven't some of the stuff i was like well maybe it's a distraction you know maybe it's not something that's helpful for somebody like me who's really trying to focus on making comics and stuff um but now i'm realizing the uses for all the different journals like i said there's junk journals so one thing that's cool about junk journals the idea, I mean, it's kind of become something more than the original idea, but the idea originally was you take like the stuff that you like the stuff that you would throw away, like maybe a tag or um, I don't know, junk mail or anything like all kinds of different things. And you just stick it into a book and it's called the junk journal and you got all this crazy stuff, you know, little just pieces of paper or like those envelope insides that I have or like just different things and you turn it into a junk journal and it kind of looks cool, you know, once you you've gotten it all made. But I also, to me, I feel like it's like a way of like collecting textures. And, and to me, it's, it's just another idea book, you know, and I feel like I can use all that again. I can digitally use any of it, you know, whatever I make, I can, take a picture of or scan and use it as a texture or something in a comic, you know? Um, and we got uh, Priya Mason. I love those mini comic idea videos. Hey, thank you. And, and again, this is the type of stuff, like if you're into the mini comic world, like having that handcrafted kind of vibe to things is always like exciting and interesting. Um, so, you know, I should kind of pull out those, st that sticker sheet, try to play with some of this material while I'm talking. So, 
Um, and let's get these. Let's get a few different things out. We'll get. Uh, I probably should have been a little bit more prepared to like do like almost like a demonstration, but we'll play around with some of these tools while I'm chatting about stuff. Um, and and the thing is too is like, and I've talked about this a million times. Like, I've learned a lot of things about creativity through getting into the modular synthesis world um, because, you know, it just taught me and freed me up to kind of um, experiment without kind of, kind of being fearless in my sketchbook or wherever, but especially with the music it has, but like, I'm still learning how to apply that kind of freedom, that experimentation, that exploratory type of work. I'm trying to learn how to apply that to what I especially love, which is making comics. Um, so, you know, <clears throat> I think mixed media collage and stuff like that is one of the ways. So let's see. <laughs> I'm going to draw like my, typical like zilla character here because it's easy to draw something i've drawn a million times and then we'll see where that goes <clears throat> so anyways so yeah i think journaling is like a really cool thing so junk journal there's so many different kind of journals it's crazy like and Oh, I should try those crayons too. Cause right, I already have to sharpen this thing, but it's because it doesn't come like super long necessarily. Um huh, this is tough. That first pull is a little bit tougher for some reason. So and it leaves a mess, but hey, see, this is the kind of thing like I'm I'm doing this. This could go into a junk journal, like this little paper thingy. You know, it's kind of curly. Like, you could do some funny, like, designs with it or whatever. There's some other little textures. Like, all this kind of stuff is the type of stuff that could go in a junk journal. And it's kind of cool because you end up using stuff that otherwise would go in the trash and go into a landfill. And, you know, I'm not saying I'm, like, super, super um, big on, like, the whole environmental stuff like that's not my uh personal uh thing that i'm super like big on talking about or anything but um at the same time i do believe in the idea of uh taking care of whatever you have and and not being wasteful and and uh you know just taking care of your your the earth really <laughs> but not not out of like i don't think the um i don't believe in like you know what i think of as like the conspiracies of the government trying to tell us certain things but that doesn't mean i don't care about you know my environment and stuff so anyways um but that's just my personal view. I don't get into politics here, really. But, hey, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so junk journals are kind of, if especially if you're, if you're into that kind of thing and, you know, that's important to you. Um, junk journal is a great way to, like, take that junk and literally recycle it, you know, to, a, like, you're, you're creating art out of it, you know. And so um, that's kind of cool. You know, I love the idea. I mean, I love, um, I've said it, talked about it before, but I love like, uh, um, minimalism. Like, I think that's an interesting concept. And while I don't know that I will ever be quite be like a minimalist, um, I like to incorporate some of the min stuff I've learned about minimalism into my life the best I can. And I like the idea of having 
being a little bit of a minimalist, you know? Um, and I feel like that's, uh, that's kind of part of, of a junk journal too. It's like taking the crap and, and making something that's at least interesting to look at or helps you get ideas like, and all that kind of stuff. Um, using up instead of wasting using and creating, you know, that, that kind of vibe that that's what I think is cool about it. So, um, so yeah, oh, you guys probably can't see that that well, but it'll come more clear at some point, I'm sure. Um, so let's see, I could do some different colors and stuff. So that's a junk journal. <laughs> I haven't started one yet, but I, I mean, I guess in some ways, you know, again, doing this little thing with, with the textures, that's, that's one kind of version of it. But, um, you know, I, I think it doesn't matter what you label these journals to, like you can kind of mix and match. I feel like, you know, I don't think it needs to be like super dogmatic or anything. So, you know, just, be inspired by all the different possibilities of journals and what they can do for, you know, your creative process. Cause I think you can, you'll be surprised what you can learn just from playing around. And it, it also, it can enhance your sketchbook too. Like I've seen a lot of people do like some crazy stuff in their sketchbook, almost like pop-ups and all these different like pockets and stuff, which I don't know if I really want to do that specifically, but I do like the idea of having other elements and, and incorporating all kinds of different things. And it's kind of a way to be a little less worried about like trying to make your sketchbook look amazing or, or just like how intimidating a sketchbook page could be like just trying to draw in it, you know? Um, so I don't know. I like the idea of these journals. And I think they're kind of interchangeable. So another kind of journal is just like a collage journal, of course. And one thing that I learned that I can't wait to use more because collage is a little intimidating to me as well. Um, but one thing I, I see um, that, that Didi has done that I've learned from her channel is you don't have to go in and complete a collage page every day or anything like that. What you can do though, is if you have some cool pictures that you really want, you're like, Oh, this would work cool in a collage, or this would be a cool idea to make a comic out of. And you use this little piece or whatever you can go in and just take that piece and put it in the book somewhere in the sketch in, in the blank pages somewhere. And then leave it and go to, and if you have another idea, go to another page that's different and put something in there. And, you know, you can repeat this process. You don't have to finish each page every time you go. You can just slap stuff all different places. And that's something that is really freeing. That's something, again, that I learned from, um, you know, the, uh, from the, the, um, synthesizer stuff the the modular synthesizer stuff is you just kind of do this like freestyle sound design and you just come up with stuff and then you put that record that to a track then come up with something different and record that to a track to the track too or you can just come up with try to find anything that fits with that and, and put that on a, another layer same thing you know it's just like with procreate or, or photoshop or clip studio paint with layers like you can always play around with the layers you know add and subtract and sometimes you know you glue something down and you can't subtract but there's still ways around that to to manipulate things it's it's surprising like we think that digital is like so awesome in some ways because it's so free and you can always take away whatever you added it's it's rare that like you can there's so many ways you can do non non-destructive processes with art digitally um that are harder to do with traditional styles of art but um you'd be surprised even if you even with just pencil and ink like um, it's, it's surprising to see what you can actually do, uh, 
even if you ruin something, say if you even spill your bottle of ink over your page, like, I mean, if it's too big, of course, it's, it's going to be tough to deal with. But there are ways to fix those things. And especially if you're working in a mixed medium um, type of way, uh, then there's really ways to fix because it's almost impossible to really make a mistake that's irreversible. And going through that process and being free in, in the context of that, it makes you feel less precious and less afraid when you're going to the comic page even and doing something a little bit more um, intentional. So, I mean, it's, it's also just like a muscle memory thing. Like you just, you get used to not being so worried about everything and you actually come, come through with like some techniques that you would never have thought of doing before um when you play around with this stuff i think this like it's hard for me to explain if you've never done you know this kind of thing how helpful it is but i'm telling you like this kind of playing around with stuff without any rules and like not needing to like be perfect and just play playing with materials playing with um with mediums playing with color like you know how how um how intimidating is coloring you know when when, you, when if you've ever tried to color a comic book or color anything you it gets really complicated really quick and it's very it can be very intimidating like i know artists who haven't tackled the problem of color because when they tried they realized oh wow i'm i'm outside i'm like outside of my depth here like i think i'm just gonna stick to ink or something you know um so one of the best ways to get better at that and and to realize hey i actually can contribute something in the realm of color is to literally play around with it where there's where it doesn't matter if you make a mistake at all you know to find find a way and in this kind of thing you know these kind of different journals are ways you can do that you know it's just going to the playground playing it doesn't matter if anything comes of it you know and so i mean i don't know to me that's super exciting and inspiring um so you can do collages you can do an idea journal i talked about that earlier um a desk journal i think that's what what um what Didi was talking about uh in one of her her live streams was like a desk journal and i think that's what i was showing you where i was rolling the thing to get those textures so i have to literally pull the string with my teeth with the first one because the string isn't long enough for me to pull it um but uh you know so, so she just called it, I think, a, a desk journal um, is where she just puts her, like, excess paint and stuff, um, which is, that's fine if you call it that, you know. Um, so I just wanted to bring that one up. And then the last one that, I mean, there's so many different, I mean, there's things called art journals, but that's like, I mean, I feel like there's so many different kind of art journals, like, a collage journal is an art journal. A junk journal is an art journal. Um, you know, a mixed media journal is an art journal. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of these things are actually art journals. And and there's a lot of different kind of journaling that goes on in the world. Like, it's not just art. Obviously, there's like bullet journals and things like that. But that's not really stuff I'm super interested or concerned with at the moment. Um, I mean, maybe someday I've done different kind of journals. I've done like prayer journals, like where I I write out my prayers and thoughts to God and stuff, which I actually really enjoy that. Um, you know, if you're a faith person, you might dig trying to do that as well. I've never done one that's like a prayer journal, but like with art as well. But I mean, you could do like a doodle journal. But the, the last thing I'll say, like as far as different kind of journals is themed journals. And the thing with that is that's, you know, that that means you could do anything and of course you can do anything i don't you don't need me to tell you that you can do ever, anything 
but you know that's like it's like you there's some of these typical ones that people do and then there's like and then you could just say themed journals where that's like well okay that that's where the sky is the limit really um and so uh i had like so many ideas for different theme journals so far um like i'd like to do like a punk rock journal that's specifically or even just a black and white journal or something like i don't know what i would call it yet because i'm not necessarily trying to make it look like specifically punk rock i just want to play with those kind of textures and those kind of techniques that punk rock like collages work with and um see here i'm like trying to sort of blend it but it's hard to see i know um but it's kind of i think it's coming out cool it's just very light you know you guys can't really see it so well uh <clears throat> but i'll show it up close at some point here i can show you like where i'm at now with it um you know this is the effect of the grease pencil all aka china marker and again i'm just playing around doing a character i've drawn a million times before and even that is a is a good practice i saw like i said i was telling you that guy um gel with mark on youtube he uh he has like a lot of youtube shorts and there's like 20 of them that are literally the same the same portrait of of some guy but he just does it like a hundred different ways and there's just like well maybe 20 different ways <laughs> um and it's just cool to see like how creative you can get literally by using the exact same subject matter even um and then uh you know doing different things and each one is its own piece of art and really cool so i mean and graffiti artists do that a lot like especially when they're doing like graffiti stickers like they'll do their character in a in a ton of different ways and, and same thing with like doodle kind of like doodle artists and stuff they they a lot of times just make variations on their characters and stuff so um so anyways these themed um kind of works like i have like i want to do a themed um journal where i'm doing like scanner art because i've talked to you guys a lot about this idea of like doing like scanner art and and um i it's like i look up i find all these things and it's hard to explain but basically you know people use photocopiers as like their main medium to make art and i've done that for album covers um you can see it in my latest album versus i used it um and I also used it in an album that I didn't end up releasing, but I made the cover already. Uh, and I, I've shown some stuff online of this like scanner art where you kind of manipulate whatever you're scanning as it scans and you can do some cool stuff, especially with text. It's really cool what you can do with text, you know? And um, yeah, I don't know. It's scanner art is really fun. So I'd like to have a whole book, a whole like journal I mean, to me, they're sketchbooks. You could also, they're like synonyms for sketchbooks to a certain degree, but, you know, you may not be actually sketching, quote unquote, in them. So, um, you know, I don't know. There's so many different themes um, that you can do. And then the other thing is, like, say you take all this time and you, you have some um, some journals and some whoops uh you know and and you do listen to what i'm saying not that you have to listen to me but like you know you listen to this kind of idea and it inspires you and you want to do it um and say you've done a bunch of them now the the challenge kind of is now how do i marry this to story you know because you can play around with words and you know, it, it just seems like a cool way to play around with words and pictures, you know, and, and when it comes down to it, that's what comics are. They're words and pictures. Well, let's find out new, unique, interesting ways to play around with words and pictures. You know what I mean? Um, so, I mean, you could even have a journal that's literally 
you know, a theme of words and pictures. And again, you could do small journals, you could do large journals. It doesn't matter. Like the idea journal, I can make big because it's like, well, I have all kinds of ideas and I already write down stuff all the time. Um, you know, uh, Didi was talking about like mind maps and writing lists, like that kind of stuff can go in an idea journal, all kinds of different things. Um, so like, I don't know, like you take all this stuff and you've played around, you've explored, you've experimented, you've expressed yourself, you found d different ways to express yourself that, that are exciting and interesting. And, you know, then you're like, all right, now I'm approaching my comic, I'm writing my story. And I mean, you don't have to, you can do this all at the same time, but like, maybe something you did in your journal the other day is like, oh, what if I did that, you know, in my story, how that would have so much stronger effect than the typical way I would have done it already before, you know, previously. Um, so again, marrying words, like there's different ways you could play around with layouts and stuff that you maybe would have never thought of if you didn't, you know, do some kind of cool journaling technique. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. If you think this is kind of a cool idea or kind of a silly idea, but to me, I think it's, I think it's exciting. Um, and you know, another thing I was going to say too, and this is kind of off topic is, um, you know, I wanted to talk about where I'm going with this channel a little bit too, but let's see, we got a comment here. Priya says me, I'm very basic as of right now. I have to work with what I have with pencils, colored pencils and crayons. And I have paper, of course, that's what I use. There you go. And that's, that's the other thing too. Like, to me, I feel like that's one of the cool things is like we don't always – not everybody has um, the resources to even have the specific traditional methods of making comics. You know, they might not have the right kind of ink or the bristle board that – you know, the stuff that's suggested – and just because that stuff's suggested doesn't mean that's the only way to make comics. They might not have an iPad or something or whatever it is. You know, if there's anything that you're, you've you seen a comic artist use to make comics and you're like, crap, I don't have access to that. I don't have the money to get that, you know, um, or I, I, I'm not near anywhere where I can get my hands on something like that. You know, there's no <laughs> there's no need to fear like <laughs> Like, seriously, like, you can do, um, you can make comics with whatever you have at hand. Like, make comics with freaking carvings on the wall if you have to. Like, whatever. Like, if you have, most people at least have access to, like, typical stuff that's used for, like, school. Like, going to school and stuff. Like, a notebook and, and a a you know, a big pen or something, you know, um, or, or I guess a ballpoint pen is a better way to say it because a Bic is a brand, but, um, you know, maybe that's all you have. Well, again, you can make comics with that. There's no reason why you can't make comics with that, whatever you have. And again, a journal you just whatever paper you have staple it together or if you have just a notebook like i have a bunch of these kind of notebooks you know i have some of these basic yo notebooks this is one i use to map out youtube videos and stuff and sometimes i just take notes in it but and i guess i did some art in it at times like there's different I've like written scripts in here and like if I have something I specifically want to teach or talk about in a video, sometimes I'll write it out and plan it out there, you know, but anyways, um, you know, I have different spiral bound notebooks like that. Like if that's all you have that and like, a, um, you know, a uh, ballpoint pen, make your comics that way. And again, you can experiment. So. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's kind of, I just feel like, you know, so often 
us as humans, you know, we, we put these limits on ourselves sometimes and we don't realize that we actually might have the resources we need to make something really cool. You know, maybe all you have is like children's chalk, like, I don't know, in an iPhone, take the chalk, you know, or maybe you could borrow your parents' iPhone or something like, or whoever has an iPhone, your friend, you know, take the chalk, draw the most magnificent comic you can think of with chalk on a sidewalk, take a picture of it. And, you know, if you want to post it on social media, do that or send it to the computer that you happen to have access to or at school or I don't know, like <laughs> there's different, there, there's so many ways that we tell ourselves we can't do this. And the truth is we can, you know, we can find a way a lot of times. I mean, some people don't even have some of these things that I'm mentioning and I get it, but I'm just saying like, whatever you have, a pencil and a paper, like is really all you need or you know, they're, they're, you know, you can find a way usually, uh, especially if you live in America, <laughs> you know, there's all kind. again, the, 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 um, the junk journals, like, um, use cardboard, like there's trash everywhere in the world, like use freaking cardboard and, and, um, a Sharpie marker. You might be able to find a Sharpie marker somewhere, like whatever. And, and just make a comic, like whatever, like there's so many, it's not, it might not be ideal, but if you really have a passion and a desire to make something, find, do your best to find a way to make, make that thing, you know? So I don't know. Hopefully that's helpful to someone. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to finish this guy here. I think I'm going to use a paint marker and like I showed you all these supplies at the beginning. Well, Look, I'm not, I didn't even buy that stuff. Like, like I mean, I bought some of it, <laughs> but like, I mean, I'm an adult. I have some money, you know, it, it just is what it is. I'm, you know, um, I don't have a lot of money, but I have some, but that being said, like my mom actually bought a bunch of that stuff, you know, and it's not that I rely on my mom to buy me things, but she just happens to be like super into this. So she keeps buying me stuff. Um, she's buying herself stuff and then she gives me some stuff as well. And I'm like, okay, I'll take it. I love art. I love playing with different mediums and stuff. So, you know, it works out. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think I'm just going to outline this with this black marker and see how that, that works. Um, Do, 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 la, 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 la. What else do we got? Oh, so I was going to talk a little bit about um, where I'm going with the channel and stuff. It's always fun to kind of put these la like these kind of black lines after you've done some color. Um, so still gonna have live streams and and whatnot but they're gonna be let sort of less i mean for now it's gonna be these live live streams like i've been doing but i'm i'm ramping up to switch things up a little bit um you know i'm not going away or anything still planning on having videos coming out every tuesday but those videos might be a little bit different sometimes so if you guys have watched my channel for a long time, you know that I used to do a thing called the Working Artist Vlog. And, you know, it was just kind of showing off, showing my day-to-day, -day, um, but also sharing my, really it was sharing my journey of trying to make comics while also being, you know, somebody who works a day job, you know. Uh, and right now I don't have a day job, but that's probably going to change very shortly. Um, as you know, and actually I have a little bit, a tiny request. Um, but hold on. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> But uh, 
I'm looking for a job right now. <clears throat> and I got some prospects. It won't be in coding, which if you've been watching, you know that, uh, I mean, it might be in coding. I'm not saying it won't be in coding, but it probably isn't going to be in coding <clears throat> because I still, I still need to learn some stuff. I still need to build up my resume for that and build up my portfolio and stuff for that. And I have done that, but I need more. You know, it takes kind of more than where I'm at at the moment. But I also, it's time to get a job. Like, I can't be jobless forever. Um, so, I'm going to be getting a job soon. <clears throat> a day job. And, um, and it's probably not going to be encoding yet. It might be. You never know. I might get lucky. <clears throat> but, uh. What I am going to be doing is, and I already kind of sort of started, is doing making websites for people for freelance, you know. Um, so, and this is my little my little request. Again, this is you don't have to do anything, but um, if you know anybody, if you or if you need a website or you know anybody who needs one, now I, I'm, you know, I'm looking for freelance work, you know which means, you know, paid freelance work. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, if you know anybody who needs a website, you know, for their business or something, let me know or send them my way. Um, there is a website called marshallkucher.com, which I don't have linked anywhere, but, you know, that's where my portfolio is. But you could just have them hit me up anywhere. Um that you find me, you know, on my Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or whatever. I'm Marsh Makes Comics on Instagram and TikTok and stuff. And on uh, Facebook, I think I'm just Marshall Lee. But anyways, <clears throat> that's just an aside. That's not like the main point. Like, I'm going to be looking for freelance work for my on my own. But, um. But, you know, any help is appreciated. I figure I might as well let you guys know because I know you guys give a crap about me a little bit. So that's cool. Appreciate that. And, uh, you know, if you want to help a brother out, that would be very helpful. <clears throat> but that being said, what I really wanted to talk about is the YouTube, YouTube channel is going to have a little bit different thing going on. Um, so... Like I said, I, I'm still going to do live streams, but they're going to be less. For now, it's probably going to be still live streams until I, I get my act together with what I want to do. But I'm going to go sort of back to doing a, a vlog type of thing. But it's not going to be like your typical. It, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be comics. It's going to be about my journey making comics. Um you know, and I'll be kind of teaching stuff as I go, I guess, you know, as I do, you know, get into different things. But I guess that, you know, you, you'd be, I'll be learning and you'll be learning along with me if you, you know, decide to be on the journey as well. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to try to dip my toes back into doing those kind of videos a little bit. And I'm going to try to make them nice and edited and, and interesting, you know. Uh, so I don't know. Hopefully you guys will dig that. And, um, like I said, I'm still going to do the live streams too, though, but they're going to be like more like once, once a month, maybe for now I'm doing live streams though, like until I get that going. Um, but just figured I'd give you guys a heads up and these videos will also come out on Tuesdays, you know, so on a Tuesday, you'll either have one of those videos or a live stream, I think. I think that's how it's going to go. Or maybe I'll just do, on the week I do, you know, the live stream, I'll still do, um, I'll still do the uh, vlog as well. So you have like two videos in the week. So, yeah, I don't know. That's the plan. So I figured I'd give you guys a heads up, the people who are faithful watchers and listeners of the show. 
Um, let's see, what else could I do? I could put, let's use one of these fat ones. Where are they? Oh, they're right here. Let's put a, what kind of color do we want to use? Maybe blue? Let's go with blue. Uh, let's see. Devante Edwards says, bless you. Oh, thanks, because I sneezed. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. P. Higgs, what's up? Thanks for coming by. What programming languages language are you learning? Um, I've learned HTML and CSS. I mean, I still have to learn it more, you know, I guess. But I've also jumped into, um, which aren't technically programming languages, and I've also learned the fundamentals. I've spent a lot of time learning um, JavaScript, probably more than than both CSS and HTML. But being it's my first programming language, it's not the easiest in the world. Um, you know, I'm still learning it, basically, is what I'm saying. Um, and I've learned a little bit of PHP too, but mostly, you know, not not a lot. But it's kind of similar in a lot of ways to JavaScript. Some of it, from what I've seen, but you know, I've kind of dabbled in learning some other stuff too, but it's just mostly JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. And I've learned Git as well, which is not a programming language, but, you know, I know how to get around in Git, <laughs> which is important for careers and stuff. Um, so, yeah, that's that's where I'm at. And it's, it's very, very small, very basic. You know, that's like the absolute fundamentals. I'm still working on the, the fundamentals, you know. Um, but... Yeah, it's 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 become it, it became harder than I expected. So, which is fine. I'm up to the challenge, but it, it just means that it's taken longer than I have expected to learn programming. So, uh, I can do the websites though. You know, I don't need you know to be super advanced, amazing. You know, uh, programmer to make websites i've already made websites and i can now that i know html and css i have even more and and so and a lot of javascript i have even more you know ability to do what i could already do without all that so um you know i'm getting into the business of of uh making websites for people uh let's see priya good for you on your finding a job haven't found a job yet but i got a few interviews going on right now for different things more along the lines of what i've done previously but i'll at least hopefully be making more money and all that so um and again i'm going to be freelancing website on the stuff on the side as well as well as doing my comics of course and so whatever income comes from that that's cool too uh, let's see. How did you color that first? I've never seen that before. This is, these are, um, I talked about this earlier, but these are um, China markers, also known as grease pencils. And usually the people only, I ever only ever see people using black and white China markers, but I didn't realize there are also color ones. So yeah, that's how I colored this one. <laughs> <laughs> just trying out some new stuff. Uh, I'm trying to learn Python. I want to learn Python too. That's probably where I should have started with programming, but I was going through a course and it told me to learn JavaScript. So yeah, it is what it is. Also new, newly trying to learn to draw comics. Hey, awesome. <laughs> That's all good stuff. I think it's all got some lessons that could be, you know, cro cross, um, pollinated as well or whatever <laughs> so yeah programming is kind of hard it is it is it's it's harder than i expected <laughs> so yeah and i'm only on javascript i'm not even on the hardest stuff <laughs> oh well it is what it is it's just the point is it's going to take longer than i expected oh and then i'm using um posco paint markers for like the outline stuff so because you did ask, like, hopefully that, that black is dried out enough to kind of do this other outline. It looks like it is. So this is kind of, and, and that, um, the China markers have kind of like a crayon type of, uh, texture to them. I'm a little bit messy with these Poscos. I might have to go over the black again. 
Oh, well. And that's the thing, again, with like, with kind of journaling and, you know, experimenting, like doodling, I feel like is, is a very experimentative, experimentative uh, kind of drawing. And this is kind of in that doodle range as well. So sometimes you get a little messier than you wanted to get. And it's kind of all right because all it is is a little doodle sticker thing. <laughs> so, and then you just go on, and they're kind of quick, and then you just go on to the next one, you know. It's all about just playing and going on to the next one. And, you know, I'm telling you guys, like, you'd be surprised how much you can learn from that approach to things. And then you could take all those things you learned and be more intentional and go make your comic. And it's really, really cool. And also, like, what kind of things mix well with others? Like, do paint markers mix well with grease pencils? You know, I'm finding out right now that I like, I kind of like the look of it, to be honest. You got that, like, sketchy texture, but then you got, like, the opaqueness of, you know, the paint marker and it's pretty darn fun so and who knows maybe you, you get into coloring with this and you decide to color your whole comic traditionally even though you did the art digitally you know that's just one of many possible approaches so once i let that blue dry I'm going to go back over the outline with the black so that it's a little bit more crisp, but I don't even have to do that. But now this is a cool, like original sticker that I could, you know, do whatever with give to somebody or I don't know. I could kind of do a background, but I don't, that, that blue is kind of still wet. So, um, another thing that could be cool, I think is throwing in some, um, some, uh, what do you call it? The pen, the regular. Uh, ballpoint pen. This is a blue color. I think. Yeah. So I don't know. Blue might not be the best to use, but I'm thinking, oh, see, that's the thing. Does it even go over? It doesn't really go over this China marker situation very well. Or maybe it does. Maybe just didn't at first. So that's kind of, again, playing around. And so now I'm getting these little bumps because you couldn't really see them. Like, unless you're up close, you can't see what I did there. Um, and I'm digging the effect. And you can tell, like, I don't know, for some reason, like, I really love when you mix up these different kind of tools like the effects you can get is really fun it's like different textures it's like in food you know i just went to this like greek festival or whatever and we had all kinds of greek food and we got this like all these greek greek like baked goods and stuff and um they had so many different textures and, and we had this ice cream too and it had like this kind of texture to it like the ice cream was just regular ice cream like soft serve but then they had like and they had like the fudge in there but then they had like this this other like crumbly bits that were like like i don't know some kind of cookie or cracker type of crumbly thing and it was a cool little texture that i'd never had with ice cream you know so i don't know <laughs> that's what i'm finding with doing this art as well i could kind of go in and Add a little bit more orange in here in different places. And I feel like here it would be kind of cool to have a little bit more. You know? So, yeah, I don't know. It's fun. It's fun to play around and experiment. And that's what I'd be doing, you know? 
That's what I'd be doing, homies. And I think it's going to be helpful for the comics. So, yeah, I think this... Okay. I like how fast these dry, too. So it looks like they're dry. So I'm going to go back in with the black and make that line a little bit thicker on the outsides. You also gain like a more confident line, I think, when you spend time in sketchbooks and journals just playing and making marks. Like, learn how to just make marks, you know, um, because you don't really learn that in typical like comic book classes or whatever. They don't talk about that. But if you take like a, um, if you were to take like an art class, Sometimes they talk about just making marks. See, I kind of did this weird shadow thing here, and I don't know that it's great, but <laughs> it's okay because I'm going to do something else after this. I'll do a different drawing, and I'll do better on that one. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. But I've done enough of these stickers that I know... Going back over this black is going to look kind of cool. Because I used to, if I, I think I said it before, but I used to do graffiti stickers a lot more. Not for vandalism. I don't like, I'm not interested in vandalism. Never was. But I still like the art of graffiti. And I'm very much influenced by graffiti artists especially when they do characters and stuff so and now this is an original sticker i could put maybe i could put some kind of varnish on it or something i don't know so that like it'll last wherever it gets put up um you know even if it's in a sketchbook, it will need a little bit of uh, wear and tear proof, I guess. So, and I could just put Zella. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> You know, so I'll put my little MC here. So, yeah, I don't know. I feel like maybe I could do something in the background if I want, or I could just leave it like this, you know. Um, <laughs> I know these words are kind of weird, like maybe this isn't the greatest. Maybe I'll do something to beef this up a little bit. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> so, I don't know. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's what I'm talking about today. <laughs> You're really good at your drawing that monster dinosaur thing. Thank you. I appreciate that. So here, I'll show it up close. It looks even better in person, though. Like, this isn't doing a good job of showing, like, the gradation. But that's okay. So, yeah. Hope you dig the talk. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, I'm going to sign off. It's time to go get some dinner. Um, you know where to find me. Marsh Makes Comics here and on other uh, places like uh, um, LinkedIn, I was going to say. Not LinkedIn. Um <laughs> <laughs> Instagram and uh, on TikTok. I'm also Marsh Makes Comics. Marshall Lee on Facebook if you want to check me out there. And those are the main places. I guess I'm also on Twitter and or which is X now. And what's that other one? That other new one, Threads. I'm on that too, but I don't even remember what my names are on those. Oh, Jim's here. What's up? Just popped in to say hello, listening to you while I, I drive 
Home, thanks again for having me on last week. If you guys didn't watch last week's episode, go watch it. It was really awesome. Jim Lujan. Uh, I got a lot of people were inspired by that episode when they saw it. Um, so, yeah, check out Jim Lujan. <laughs> thanks for coming by, man. Um, P. Higgs says, they call it cross-hatching, I think, and hatching. Yeah, I, I guess I was kind of doing some hatching. Or, oh, that's making marks. Oh, you maybe were thinking about making marks, but making marks could be like anything. You can make marks with any, 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 anything. Um, so I think that's what they kind of mean when they say that. But, um, yeah, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Oh, wait, I think I missed some things. Do, do, do. Okay, I just missed this one. <laughs> I do everything in Clip Studio Paint. Never tried to use art supplies. I don't know if one is better than the other. Hey, well, you could do a lot of experimenting in Clip Studio Paint, too. I've definitely done some. Clip Studio Paint's great. I love that program. Um definitely worth playing around exploring experimenting and and seeing what you could do that you might not have thought of that you could do so anyways <laughs> that being said thank you again for everybody hanging out with me i'm gonna get going you guys rock i'll talk to you on the next episode